All right, hello everybody. So welcome to the second uh, to, to our second video series or the second part of the video series where we're talking about angular measurements and how we're using them in precision rifle shooting. Um, so today we're talking about minutes of angle. Yesterday I went into detail about Miller radians. So Miller radians, if you remember, are the metric uh, or the me me the metric way of measuring angular distance and minutes of angle. Uh, would be like the English way if you had to think about it like that. So first off, let's talk about angular measurements or review it in case you didn't watch the video from yesterday. So we use angular measurements in precision rifle shooting because when you're moving the barrel, you're moving it in an angular fashion. Okay, you're not moving it linearly, right? And that poses a problem when you're trying to measure uh, how far that movement actually means when you when, 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 when you're looking at a target so when you're looking down a rifle scope at a target you are looking at it um, because you're trying to determine where you need to move the barrel in order to hit the target where you need to hit it and you're adjusting for wind you're adjusting for gravity uh, you're making all, all these factors that, uh, that that you need to consider. And so we need a way to measure what those distances are going to be or me measure the clicks that you need to make in order to move the rifle scope in the way that you need to move it so that you can have the barrel line up where it needs to line up in order to hit the target where it needs to hit it. So if you, if you imagine two laser pointers, just like this diagram here shows, if you imagine two laser pointers right by each other, and then you bring them apart, right? They're going to make a corresponding angle, and that's what this is, right? Uh, and that angle stays the same the entire way up the lines. Now, what doesn't stay the same are the linear distances between the lines, and that's what we use mil to calculate because or mil and moa. Sorry, uh, this is the moa. Uh, thing and I just kind of mill still in my back still in my mind uh, but we use MOA to calculate these distances so that you as the shooter down here know that okay this is so many yards out this many clicks is going to move it that far away because it's so many yards out now we did mill before today's MOA it's a minutes of angle now minutes of angle means just 1 60th of one degree okay and, that, and that's literally all that it stands for uh, which is why it's called minutes because it's the 60th you know 60 minutes in an hour and uh, 60 seconds in a minute etc cetera, etc cetera. so if you imagine like this circle right here if you if you think if you imagine this as just being one degree I know that's not actually one degree but you know hypothetically if you divide that into 60 parts each one of those 60 parts is going to be one MOA so for calculating MOA, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the literal like exact specification that you get is that at 100 yards, one MOA is 1.047 inches. Uh, 200 yards, it's 2.094 inches, et cetera, et cetera. And that, that's the exact measurement. However, we're going to round to one inch, usually. Now, this is completely up to you, and there's plenty of people who don't round to one inch, and that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but if you're watching this, I'm assuming you're just beginning. And if you're just beginning, I would suggest just sticking to one inch because it's going to make the math a lot easier on you. Um, the, thing, the disadvantage of MOA is that it's much harder to calculate it mathematically, especially like in your head on the fly, uh, because if you're looking down the scope, you really don't want to take your eye off the target if you don't have to. I mean, you can, obviously, but if you don't have to, you don't want to. Uh, if you can make that adjustment in your head, you would rather just do it then and there. And the reason why um, just rounding it to one inch doesn't really make that much of a, m much of an effect to where you're going to have to worry about it too much when you're just beginning is because, I mean, if you go all the way to 10 MOA, which is a thousand yards, Okay, which is like if you're just beginning, you're probably not going to shoot farther than that. The difference in there between rounding and not rounding is 0.47 inches. And if you want to compare that 
just so you kind of have something something in your mind. The base of a 308 Winchester bullet, well, the base of the casing anyway, right here is 0.4728 inches. So it's not even as big as that. Now, you might think that's a big deal. Totally fine if you do. Um, but again, that's at 1,000 yards, right? If you're shooting at 200 yards, it's 0 0.094 inches, which isn't even like, like it's a fraction of the width of the bullet itself. And generally speaking, that's not going to make that much of an impact in the, uh, in the grand scheme of things. Now, when you're getting more into more complicated stuff, you know, it, it, there are times when knowing the exact conversion will make a difference. Uh, but that's a little bit outside the scope of this. This is just kind of a introduction to MOA. So I mentioned earlier that we're talking about when we talk about using angular measurements, it's to measure it's to measure the distance to the target. Now you need to know the distance to the target because your bullet doesn't fly straight. It flies in a curved trajectory like this, right? I mean, what, what you're literally doing with your barrel is you're pointing it upwards. And because as soon as the bullet leaves the barrel, gravity starts taking effect. And the longer out you go, the more of an effect gravity has on it, right? So it might not like be pointing downwards when it leaves the barrel, but gravity is starting to take effect as soon as it does leave the barrel, right? Now, the, uh, and, we, and we need to know that um, we need to know that distance because you need to use your ballistics calculations from your uh, fr from your ballistics card that you have for whatever bullet that you're using to understand how quick how quick you're gonna the gravity is gonna pull the bullet down so that you know what angle you need to point your barrel at and we use MOA to calculate that distance okay so if you want to know the distance of the target in yards and I mean, you can use meters or yards. If you look at the full article, I give you the uh, the equation for meters as well. But this is the, this is the one in yards. So if you want to know the distance to target in yards, uh, you just take the height of the target in inches, multiply it by 100, and divide it by whatever the MOA reading on the reticle is. And we're going to go over an actual example of this here in a little bit. Uh, and here's an example of an MOA reticle. So this is for the Argus BTR MOA, uh, the 6 to 24 magnification, which is a great, great scope if you're looking for a, if you're looking for a low cost, uh, but feature packed, fe feature packed MOA scope. This is a really good one. They also have the MIL. Uh, I mean, I have it. I use it. I think it's fantastic. I, I use the MIL anyway. So each of these hash marks, is 2 MOA, right? And that's how you're that that, that that's how you're going to uh, to calculate what the distance is to the target because you're going to notice where the target lands on these hash marks and use that MOA to calculate how far away the target is, which we're going to do in the next slide. Okay, so here's that same reticle, and if you look. You start here at zero. If you put the target at zero and you go up one hash mark, two hash mark, three hash marks, okay? So each of these hash marks stands for two MOA. That makes it six MOA. So the target is six MOA tall. Now, if we know that that target is a three foot target or 36 inches, we can tell that by our equation from earlier, the distance from the target is 600 yards right? So height of the target in inches, 36 times 100 divided by the MOA reading on the reticle, which is 6. So 36 times 100 is 3,600. 3,600 divided by 6 gives us 600. So we now know that there's 600 yards to the target. So we can then take out our ballistics calculator or our ballistics sheet, whatever it is, and look at what the bullet drop is for the particular ammunition that you're using and make the adjustments that you need to make and then make the adjustments on the windage that you need to make. Now, this is an extremely uh, basic example, but it is exactly 
how to use it. So that's all I have for now. Thank you guys very much for paying attention. Leave me comments. I want to know what you like, what you don't like, what, uh, what are some other things that you want to see. And as always, reach out with any questions. Thank you.